So this lesson's a continuation of lesson nine, um, where we did addition and subtraction of real numbers. Now we're going to focus on multiplication and division. And the nice thing about multiplication and division, I think it's actually easier because there's only two rules that you have to remember, and it's the same rules for both of them. So when we're looking at multiplication, as long as you have the same signs, it's going to stay positive. And if you have different signs, you're going to have a negative answer. So same signs meaning if I multiply a positive times a positive, it's going to stay positive. And if I multiply a negative times a negative, then it's going to become positive as well. So negative times a negative is going to become positive. So same signs, positive. And then opposite signs, so different signs, is always going to be negative. So if I have a plus times a negative, that's going to be negative. Or if you have a negative times a positive, that's going to be negative. So those are our four different situations for any kind of numbers that you'd be multiplying or dividing by. Um, so let's look at examples of these. So for the first one here, if I have negative 8 times negative 3, a negative times a negative is going to be positive, and then I just do 8 times 3, we get 24. Here's another example. Negative 10 times positive, 50, times positive 5. Negative times a positive is going to be negative. 10 times 5 is 50. So let's look at another. Negative 4 times... Negative 7. Negative times negative is positive. 4 times 7 is 28. And 5 times negative 7. Positive times negative is negative. Multiply the 2, you get 35. So you can kind of see the pattern here. Um, let's try some examples that have order of operations involved. So what happens if we have negative... 3 times negative 2 to the third minus 5 times negative 4 squared. So, order of operations, do the parentheses and the exponents. So I have negative 3. When I do negative 2 times, or negative 2 to the third, that's like saying negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. And if you look at that, that's saying negative times negative becomes positive 4 times a negative 2. And then when you multiply these, positive times a negative becomes negative. So it's actually going to become negative 8. And then for this negative 4 squared, that's like saying negative 4 times negative 4, which is a negative times a negative is a positive, so you get positive 16. That's a common mistake, too. You always have to make sure that when you're squaring a negative, it's always going to become positive. So for, the, for this, to keep going here, I have a negative times a negative is going to become positive, so I have 24. And then 5 times 16, I'm going to keep it as minus, and then it's going to be 80, 5 times 16, because it's a negative times a positive, so it's a negative. We subtract these, so now we have a positive number and a negative number. This is like doing this. It's like adding a negative 80. So opposite signs means you subtract. So when I subtract those two, I get 56. 80 minus 24 gives me 56. You always subtract big minus small, and you're ignoring the signs. And then you keep the sign of the bigger number. Bigger number is 80, so I keep 
the sine of that. So you get negative 56 for that. Um, another example, let's look at fractions. So what if I have negative 3 fourths times 5 over 7? Remember for fractions, multiplying fractions, you just multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom. So the negative of this fraction can really go anywhere. It can go up top with 3, it can go out in front, or it can go down with the 4. It doesn't make a difference. But wherever I choose to keep it is where I kind of want to keep it when I'm looking at multiplying across the top, multiplying across the bottom. So I'm going to keep it up top with the 3. So then I have negative 3 times 5 up top gives me negative 15. Then on the bottom, it's 4 times 7, so I have 28. And then that's it for that. Um, and then what if I have negative 2 times 0? Well, 0 times anything is just 0. So if it's negative or positive, it doesn't make any difference. It's always going to be 0. All right, so then now let's look at division. So division is going to follow the exact same rule as multiplication. So it's the same as multiplication. And that's because when we're dividing, so A divided by a number B, that's really the same thing as A over B which is the same thing as saying a times 1 over b. So a divided by b is really the same thing as saying a times its reciprocal. So that means we have the same rules. So if it's the same sign, that means your answer is going to be positive. And different sign, Why it keeps doing this? Um, we're gonna have negative. So, looking at some examples, if we have twelve divided by negative six, well, you have opposite signs or different signs, so it's gonna be a negative answer. Twelve divided by six is two. That's it. Um, you can say the negative can be up on top. So negative 12 divided by 6. Opposite signs divide the 12 and the 6. So I kind of talked about this on the last page where it doesn't matter if you put the negative down below or up top in a fraction. Either way, we got the same answer. So it really doesn't make any difference when you're doing that. So just keep that in mind. Um, another one, negative 40 divided by negative 5. Well, same sign becomes positive. So positive divide 40 divided by 5, we get 8. Let's look at a fraction example. Negative 3 fourths divided by 7 over 9. Remember, division by fractions, this is a good review. So division by fractions. Keep the first, change the sign, flip the second, and now it becomes multiplication. Multiply across the top, so we're going to have negative 27. Multiply across the bottom, we have negative or we have positive 28. Um, what if we have a whole number? So let's see if we have whole number divided by a fraction. So 8 divided by a negative fraction. So again, keep, change, flip. That negative with that 4 can go up with the 5 if you want. It can go out in front of the fraction. Remember, it doesn't make a difference. When I go to multiply these, you want to think of that 8 as being over 1 because it's a whole number. So multiply across the top, you get 40. Multiply across the bottom, we get negative 4. 
and we can reduce this. We have negative 40 over negative 4. Really, think of it as a division. 40 divided by 4 is 10. You have opposite signs, so it's going to stay negative. Um, let's see. Let's look at an order of operation one. So we have negative 3 plus 2, all squared, all over negative 3 squared minus 2 squared. So order of operations, parentheses first. So simplify that stuff in parentheses, in parentheses in the numerator. So negative 3 plus 2, opposite signs, you're going to subtract the numbers, you get 1. Keep the sign of the bigger absolute value, which is 3, so you keep the negative 1. And now we're looking at doing our exponents. So on the top, negative 1 squared really means negative 1 times negative 1. So negative 1 times negative 1 becomes positive 1. So up top, it's going to be positive 1. Down below, when you square, this is important to see, the negatives are not in parentheses. So they do not belong with the exponent of 2. On, in the numerator, negative 1 is in parentheses, so it belongs with the exponent of 2. So when I'm looking below, it's going to be negative and then whatever 3 squared is, so 9 minus whatever 2 squared is, which is 4. So now I have 1 over negative 9 minus 4. That's really the same thing as thinking of negative 9 plus negative 4. Remember your keep change change, change the subtraction to addition, change the positive 4 to negative 4. When you have the same sign for addition, you're adding the numbers and you're keeping the sign. So the answer is 1 over negative 13. You could say negative 1 13. You could say negative 1 over 13. So there's three different ways you can represent that answer. They're all equally the same. And then the last thing is what happens if you have zeros involved? So we're on number 7. So what happens if I say 20 divided by 0? Any number divided by 0 is always going to be undefined. So this is just undefined. And the reason for that is because there's no way that I can multiply by something. So the reason why this is undefined is because there's no way for me to ever get negative 20 by doing 0 times some number. So that's why 0 times nothing is going to give us negative 20. So that's why it's undefined. Where if you look at the next one, if I say 0 divided by negative 20, that's going to equal 0. And the reason for that is because if I start with 0 and I want to find a number that I can multiply by negative 20 to get 0, well, there is a number that works. It's 0. So that's why my answer is 0, where in this case, there's nothing that works, so that's why it's undefined. Okay, so that's kind of how it works. Alright, so that's it for that one.